What's up, guys? Mike from uh, Gaming Night Live here. Kind of doing like a, a new segment where it's kind of like I do like a, a versus kind of segment. Like, obviously, you can see from the title, I have Sonic Adventure 1 versus Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which which is better. Uh, I want to do other stuff like maybe like possibly like which Smash game is the best of all time, like overall in terms of playability. Uh, Kingdom Hearts series, like maybe like compare Breath of the Wild versus other Zelda games. But I just want to let you guys know this is a new series we're starting. It's really supposed to make some engagements happening between with the audience and you know, make you think, or maybe uh, help you uh, help you guys learn, because uh, most of you probably are, are wrong. That's right, I said it. All right, well, jumping into it now. So right here, obviously, you can see from the title, Sonic Adventure One versus Sonic Adventure Two Battle. Which game is better? Uh, no beating around the bush. Sonic Adventure One is a better adventure game. It is far superior to Sonic Adventure Two Battle. Now, before you go, what are you talking about, man? Sonic Adventure Two Battle was like my childhood. That shit's the best. Yeah, that shit's trash, alright, dude? Like, you only like it because it has a bit more updated models, uh, and you remember Shadow the Hedgehog, and you remember the very first level. You remember City Escape. Now, don't get me wrong, City Escape is an amazing level, okay? But the thing is, when you're thinking of uh, past elements, or like trying to remember the game, what comes to mind? When you think of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, you think of the very first level, City Escape. Even the song by Jun Sano, or however how you say it, that song is amazing. Even non-Sonic fans love City Escape song. That song is the shit. But remember, that level you start off, it's like a sunny sky, like a fake looking Los Angeles, California area. You have the really cool part where Sonic jumps out of a helicopter, you're, like, you're skateboarding essentially the streets, you're grinding poles, you gotta run away from the giant gun truck. Like, Everything about that level is like the perfect first level. If I ever was supposed to talk about like a perfect first level, like similar to what Ego Raptor did with Sequelitis, where you talk about how Mega Man X teaches you, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, or Sonic Adventure 2's first level, that level is so perfect of a first level that no matter what, every time you think back to Sonic Adventure 2, you will think of that. Now, while that experience and that joy may be something, uh, you know, like great and like brings back heart form, heart form, heart, heart full, whatever memories. It is something that also disillusions you to actually how weak overall that game is, especially compared to Sonic Adventure 1. Now, Sonic Adventure 2 did a lot of things that uh, were no bueno, all right? I'll, I'll start with the good stuff. They added Shadow. I mean Vegeta. I mean Shadow. <laughs> and uh, he's a very cool character. He became an integral part of the Sega universe, obviously. He really helped form, you know, more characters like an anti-hero because Knuckles was kind of playing that role and sometimes he wasn't. Uh, they had multiplayer in Battle versus, you know, Adventure 1 and DX, which did not have multiplayer. That was a really cool addition. I say Battle because, remember, a lot of people's first Sonic game was not on the Dreamcast, which obviously didn't sell that well. Mine was. I mean, my first Sonic game is obviously Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. And the best one, Sonic 3 another. But I played them on the Dreamcast, and of course I got them for, you know, my GameCube. Um... But for a lot of people, they always say battle, like, oh my god, because they played it on the GameCube and this is their first foray into it. That's why I say that a lot more. Um, the multiplayer, man, fun fact, wasn't part of the game, but multiplayer is kind of cool. I mean, it really only want to do the Sonic versus, uh, the Sonic versus Shadow parts. Uh, it had a better Chow Garden. I'll give it that. Uh, I really, I, enjoy, I'm not a big fan of Chow Garden. I know people live and die for Chow Garden. Uh, Chow Garden was really essentially a Dreamcast Tamagotchi thing. It used to go in your memory card and it was really cool. You carried it around everywhere. However, um, for the later versions, for the Nintendo GameCube versions, you actually put them into your Sonic Rush and your GBA and you connected them. Doesn't matter, Sonic Adventure 2 had the better Chow Garden. Now, am I going to say because Shadow the Hedgehog, City Escape, Ch and Chow Garden, and an added multiplayer, this game is better than Sonic Adventure 1? No, I'm not going to say that. Those are the only redeeming factors Sonic Adventure 2 has. Okay, the story is not... A, the, the stories are about, about equal. I, they're, they're not better. I mean, Shadow's pretty cool in the IIT of the uh, in, entire arc. How many of you guys actually remember what the ultimate life form is? Because it's not Shadow the Hedgehog. Okay, but a lot of people like to forget that. Uh, the way the stories interla interlap with each other is a really cool feature of all the Sonic Adventures. But I'm going to break it down really simply. We'll start off with music. Crush 40 did both uh, both soundtracks, majority of both soundtracks. Uh, Crush 40 kills it. They're an amazing band. I mean, his world from Sonic 2006, okay, is an amazing song. So they're about equal, except I would give Sonic Adventure 1 this slight edge in this one because, like, songs like Crisis City and each thematic, uh, each level's theme really felt more, I don't know, like, genuine or, like, unique to it, and just the soundtrack, it's just, 
I, I don't know. There's something about it. The songs are still used to this day more from Sonic Adventure 1 than they are in Sonic Adventure 2. Some even had like some rehashes. So I'm just saying. Uh, it, it's pretty even there. Graphics wise, of course, everyone's going to be like, well, Sonic Adventure 2 looks better. Well, yeah, of course. They had the cool soap shoes. I don't know. If, I don't remember if soap was in the game. Up. But and the models looked updated. But Sonic Adventure One had the classic original Sonic models for them, and I think that was the correct way to look at them. And in addition, people like to go, "Well, this game's janky." Remember when uh, Tails crashed in Emerald Beach in Sonic Adventure One? And Sonic with that weird Bleh! scream. Yeah, that one. Uh, guess what? Sonic Adventure Two also had janky cutscenes. Okay, Sonic Adventure Two had voice lines that would not fit into each line and characters would cut each other off or like their mouths would just keep moving at least Sonic Adventure 1 is just like they know they're importing a Japanese game and they're dubbing and it was their first attempt at dubbing of this and it's like we appreciate for what it was and it's still a bit cleaned up Sonic Adventure 2's voice lines are just like and you just see their mouth you just see their mouths moving the cutscenes the whole time all right like Tails's mouth just constantly moves uh now and since we're going to cutscenes we gotta talk about gameplay all right, uh, level design was just trash in Sonic Adventure 3. Sonic Adventure 1 had a great balance between speed, platforming, and exploration. Uh, even some parts of the levels, he, like, goes back to Crisis City. Parts of the level, first off, Sonic is faster than he is in Sonic Adventure 2. But parts of the level were all about speed and platforming. And then once you get to the end of Crisis City, you land in the city. And it has a kind of a, a crisis, I mean, not crisis, I had to say Crisis City. It has a type of sandbox exploration tour towards it. And I think that was really cool. You know, like, it was just something like... It made it an adventure game. It made it a 3D world game similar to Mario 64. It was like, wow, you're also exploring with Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic Adventure 2, the Sonic and Shadow levels are literally, you have to go on this linear path with very little options for going the other way. Sonic games are be meant to go left to right, essentially, right? If I'm looking at it in a general standpoint. But what made them unique versus like a Mario game was you had options to go, I want to go the top route, I want to go the middle route, I want to go the bottom route. Okay, I'm gonna play as Tails. I could definitely take the top route. Knuckles, he could find his own path to possibly break some walls and you find a way. This is classic Sonic. Now, Sonic Adventure also does that. You play the same levels, but different types of the same levels, and you go about them in different ways with each character. Sonic Adventure 2 does not have that. You play alternate versions of levels, but they're all the same. Like, they're not different green jungle white white forest or is it green forest and white jungle uh, yeah i mean i love the songs but uh, they, they're really akin to each other okay and if we're looking at it, it like each character so sonic he's slower his, his gameplay has become more linear obviously shadow has the same thing there's no uniqueness there's like a type of realism in sonic adventure 2 um if we look at Tails, Tails got a huge nerf. Tails became like E102 Gamma gameplay, and he's always in his mech. They ruined Tails. Like, Tails' character was always like that I follow Sonic, I'm very similar to Sonic, except I can do this. Now they try to make Tails his own character, and they give him a, a snooze fest of a gameplay when you're in your mech all the time. I understand if you're doing that for Dr. Robotnik, I, Eggman, but I mean, like, come on, dude. Like, uh, it's boring, all right? Like, Tails' levels are generally boring. It's literally jump up a few steps, break everything, lock on the four things, go down an elevator, do the same thing, do some crappy, really crappy platform elements with hovering that you could skip most of it anyway. Uh, Knuckles' levels, absolute. Knuckles and Rouge in Sonic Adventure 2 is the most boring thing anybody could play, okay? Because you have to, you literally have to listen to all the tips, okay? So you literally, if without the computer tips, you can't do it. You cannot get these emeralds, okay? Unless you're a speedrunner and you memorize all the paths. You're praying for RNG where it's like, oh, all the Master Shard emeralds lands right next to me. So this level isn't that bad. The levels get worse as you play another one. The aquatic maze one and the space level are com turned into a completely Y-axis vertical level. But it's too large and it's not fun constantly going up and down. There's no exploration. It's literally like, I have to go higher. And then... Oh, the Master Emerald RNG all the way in the bottom, according to the computer. At least when you play in Sonic Adventure 1, Knuckles explores the level that you played as Sonic and Tails and, and you know, as everybody. And you're able to find any Emerald in any order, okay? You're not, you're not tied to specific, like, unlocks and traits and all that. Like, it's, they're all 
it, it's an adventure free roaming game it's literally in the name it's an adventure okay they got rid of the overworld one of the biggest things i'm talking about here okay the overworld gave sonic adventure that feel of adventure that gave that feel of new new uh new a uh, new sonic game a new usher of an era and yeah it was a bit barren, but you know what? I still remember unlocking the casino. I still remember finding all the ruins and, you know, unlocking more puzzles. I remember finding my light speed dash shoes or the metal claws, like, that some were required to, you know, actually all of the, like, the power-ups in Sonic Adventure 1 are required to go on. They want you to explore. Going to Tails and seeing where the tornado is, awesome. The egg carrier is one of the best, like, hub world designs there is. It's badass, okay? Yes, there's not that much in the world but the fact I, I I am being in that world okay I don't need uh, I don't need things to fill up my world the fact that I'm in that world exploring it with Sonic makes it better okay um, now look camera work eh, both games are eh, pretty meh in the camera design I mean it is one of their first you know 3d games for Sonic and they have to try to handle his speed so of course the camera's not gonna be that great but what I really enjoy, though, is playing Sonic for who Sonic is. And remember, Sonic Adventure 1, you play Sonic in 10 to 11 levels plus the, the secret ending. Meanwhile, in Sonic Adventure 2, you have no choice of freedom. In Sonic Adventure 1, if I did, say, let's say my favorite character wasn't Sonic. I love Sonic. He's my favorite character. But say it was Knuckles. Once you unlock, once you find Knuckles in the story and you unlock his part of the story, you play, you can play him from right there. And you explore and you learn the world between Knuckles' eyes and you see his story. He fights different forms of chaos. Chaos is a great villain, okay? Yes, it's a bit cliche, his story, but he is a great villain and for what they do in that game uh, shadow's cool anti-hero but there's no like it, it, it just gets ridiculous i mean it's not going to do your plane you play mario kart for two levels technically with rouge and tails there's mother everything the president, okay? Like, people like to talk about, like, oh, well, Sonic in a human world. Dude, Sonic Adventure 2 just makes it completely ridiculous, okay? It, it, it makes it absolutely ridiculous. Like, it, I get it, they're not on Mobius anymore, but it's like they forced inclusion into a hyper realism world, which kind of make it weird, okay? Yeah, now let's say, uh, well, you're forgetting, Michael, that Sonic, uh, Sonic Adventure has, uh, it has Big the Cat. Yeah, Big the Cat levels suck. I 100% agree with you. I don't like Big. But if you're good or meet, like competent, you could finish Big's levels within a minute. Okay? And it's basically a mini game. Like, he's, you're not playing 20 levels of Big the Cat, alright? Like, you're playing, you're remembering, like, Ego Game Grubs messing up on Big the Cat or, like, the trouble you had when you first did it. It, it, it sucks. Froggy's annoying. Big the cat's not cool. But you know what? You only play it like five times. And fishing is basically a mini game. Fishing is in Final Fantasy 15. It is literally like, oh, everybody's like, oh, I love it. Of course you did. Fishing was big on the Dreamcast. Fishing is big in Japanese game culture at all. I was playing Yee's uh, 8, Lac Lacrimosa of Dana. I could literally press the X button. I could fish whenever I want to. Okay? So I. I don't mind playing four or five levels and guess what it tied into the story and made it very important anyway So you still have to play and find out other things I, When I'm playing the hero story and the dark story like I have no choice of freedom It's Sonic Tails, Knuckles, Sonic Tails, Knuckles, Knuckles, Tails, Sonic, Sonic like a uh, Boo now post game. I'm gonna give Sonic Adventure 2 a little bit of the edge I mean I did like you know replaying some of the levels or finding the lost chows but I only like doing them with Sonic or Shadow. I did not like playing them with Knuckles, and I did not like playing them as, you know, as Tails, Eggman, Rouge. Uh, Sonic Adventure 1 is essentially like, hey, you're gonna play this level again, and you're gonna do it in three minutes, or this. You do it three times versus the five times in Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, the post-game reward is Metal Sonic versus uh, Green Hill Zone remade in 3D. Both are very cool rewards. They did, they made it all right. But the point is, I'm trying to make is your nostalgia factor. You remembering Sonic Adventure 2 Battle as a superior adventure game is just it's just wrong. Like the game is not a good Sonic Adventure game if you're comparing it to number one. It is a good game. It is a very fun game. It got some good tracks got some good characters and it's fun playing multiplayer or you know just, just wanting to grind and go through but when you're talking about the superior adventure game it doesn't stand a candle the sonic adventure one and that's all i gotta say guys 
I mean, you know what it, you know what it is. Uh, if you guys want to flame me, um, <laughs> don't forget to like below, subscribe, and uh, I really appreciate. It. I'd love to hear you know some feedback like, oh, you know, Michael, you're wrong. Like, look at this camera angle. Like, this is really bad. I mean, I I played both games about five times each on my Dreamcast and my GameCube. I mean, I love Sonic. Yeah, you got, you got a Sonic mug right there and a Sonic little doll. All right, like. It is, man. I, it, it's, they're, they're great games. I mean, look, we're, I'm not talking Sonic Colors. I'm not talking Sonic Generation. I'm not talking Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I'm not trying to contend on the best ones. I'm talking about adventure games in each. And Sonic Adventure 1 is the Sonic 3D game that we wanted and needed. And it did what it had to do. And I really wish they would expand more into something like that. I mean, it's too late for that. But whatever, guys. See you guys. And see you guys in the next one.